Hello everyone, today we're going to have a quick look at how to get a buckle and strap going for our helmet. Um, we should be well along our way of having something like this modelled up or whatever your helmet actually is and um, if it requires a strap obviously we're going to have to model that in there. Um, you can have a look at bicycle helmets online or you know obviously if you have one but generally we find we have a strap that comes down from in front of the ear and then we'll have one that comes from behind the ear and joins up um, into one piece of fabric and it sort of um, fits around a buckle that is meant to secure under the chin. Um, this is going to come out looking a bit different for everyone because they're using different kinds of buckles or the helmets are different. So it's just about getting the main sort of principles down. Um, so for me, what I did, I went to GrabCAD and actually downloaded this buckle. Um, it's just a standard kind that you expect to see on just about every kind of buckle. I think for our case though, or well, your case, not mine, um, you should be modeling up your own little buckle. It can be simple like that one, or it could be something custom that suits your design more. Um, so I did the basic steps of downloading it and coming across to my Fusion browser and uploading the file by dragging and dropping it in there. That allows me to open up an assembly. Um, so yeah, this is the buckle. We're not going to change it or anything. Um, we're just going to stick with this one for now. And um, yeah, so first thing we have to do is get this into our main assembly and locate it. So it's pretty simple. Let me just close that there. Um, we just have to right click and insert into current design. You know, and it's just the same sort of process we did when we we're bringing in the actual head in as well. And now it's a matter of positioning this buckle. I'm going to keep it in the center and just rotate it somewhere so it looks maybe not exactly perfect, but slightly at an angle. Um, you know, something like that can work. I could tilt it forward to make it fit perfectly under the chin, but like I said, at this point, it's just for visualization. It's not going to, you know, be a perfect fit for this, what, perfect person who doesn't exist. Um, it's just for visualization. We want to show what a buckle on this thing would look like. So we can just put it there. Um, for some reason, it's coming in green. I'm not too sure why, so we can just quickly change that with like a plastic. Um, or I can use the same sort of paint that I've used for my helmet and you know, man, yeah, that kind of looks fine. All right. So now it's a matter of creating this sort of natural looking strap. And we're going to do that by creating a freeform. Um, this is generally our go-to when it comes to making this kind of thing. And so we can do it a couple ways, um, creating it face by face snapped to the head. So if we select face, we turn on object snap and that allows us to snap it across this head and that's going to let us bring it all the way down and across. Um, so we can do that. We can do it without snapping a face and just position it. Um, it doesn't really matter which way you go. I might just do a mixture of both. Um, so what I'll actually do is start slightly below the head because if I start up here it's going to clip it to the helmet and I'll just start down here. Um, and I'm kind of just guessing what the distance from here to here and here to here is. We can always change that a little later. Um, and we just want to at least get one face going. Um, and then we should be able to, if this will rotate nicely, um, I'm not sure why it would be freezing up. I'm just trying to move the camera. Um, okay. And as you can see, it's put it pretty much right on the face where we want. I'm actually just going to turn, um, turn off uh, selectable, unselectable on the head. So now I can't click it. It may have been just slowing down because it was trying to select a bunch of different faces. Uh, and all we have to really do is edit the form and holding in our alt key 
we can just start to pull out our sort of strap and how it might look. So we just want to go basic orientation first, like, yeah, something like that, like there. And then we have to come to our front view and start pulling these across. Um, so this is just one way of doing it. You know, snapping to the faces would work as well, but there's nothing wrong with kind of going about it this way. It might give you a bit more curvature in it. Who knows? Doesn't really matter too much at this point. Um, again, this is something for you to all experiment with. And once we've kind of got something that we like, again, I'm not sure why everything's coming up green, but it doesn't matter. Um, we want to also have one coming from over here. So I will make that selectable again and I'll just put in my first one. Make sure we're snapped across like that. Select our first one and turn on object snap. Try and get them roughly the same sort of width. Eh, something like that will be fine. Now, the problem is when we come down to the bottom here, let me just push that up there. When we get to this point where they're meant to join up, Oh, and also when you're making um, freeforms around a sort of radius, always try and get these uh, center or these lines pointing towards the center of that radius. So this should be pointing up like that. So if it's pivoting around the E, you kind of want it based more around that. And that'll give you a bit of a, um, a more consistent shape. Um, all we want to do is join these together. And maybe we want to join them up here. Uh, so we could, um, or maybe down here actually, below the ear. Um, one way is just to create a bridge between here and here. Um, I haven't really experimented with that too much yet, so let's just have a go at it and see what comes up. I'll just move this face in. Oh, it's actually pretty good as it is, so no need to actually modify that. Um, what I will do though is I will divide this face um, to make a section that's about as long as that. So I'll just do that simply by inserting an edge across here and somewhere just below. That can work. And I'm just going <coughs> to, pardon me, I'm just going to use the merge edge command, select one, edge group two, select the other, and that's just going to pull that across. So we get this kind of thing. Um, we might find that maybe that's a bit looking a bit unnatural down there. We can delete that one out of the way um, and add in another one in the middle and just reposition it. So sometimes it's a lot easier to just delete things out of the way and reposition them um, from scratch. So something like that, we might find we probably want this to be a bit tighter where they join up. So you can always go to the box mode and have a look. But um, I think for now, that's kind of fine. I'm not too fast at the moment. Um, we just want to make sure that our, we're having a lot of crossover here because we're going to push a pin through it later. So we'll just bring that up and we'll just bring that up and see that it doesn't really intersect with our body. So it seems to be sitting on the inside. Ideally you'd want it as close as possible. So we can just grab, um, this face here and this one we want to make this vertical so it's nice and flat and we can just kind of push this whole face across to yeah, about there we can see there's a little bit of a gap but that's not going to be a problem we'll probably come and modify that again later same with over here um, this will just be a bit of trial and error as well making sure we can kind of get everything looking right um, not clipping through um, but it's pretty easy to get away with this. Obviously, this isn't going to show up a huge amount in your renders. Um, so there's one other thing, and it's the fact that this part isn't going to be symmetrical. Um, we can see we've got our buckles on a slight angle, um, but we obviously want our strap to be in the same spot on both sides. 
So I would suggest at this point what you can do, if this will let me make any more commands without freezing, um, what we can do is mirror our whole thing across and then delete the symmetry so we're allowed to modify each one. So I'll show you that. So we want to go mirror duplicate and what that does, it copies the form from one side to the other. So select our T-spline body, the mirror plane, we select that and that's going to put it on the exact opposite. Hopefully I've made this whole thing symmetrical. I think I have. And we can just tick untick weld because weld would try and join these together. Obviously they're not close enough to join. Wow. And that actually came up pretty close, but that doesn't matter because this changes drastically at, um, at this point. So what we have to do now is thread this through um, as we would a well, a normal sort of strap. Um, this is where it can get quite confusing. So you generally want to make it dead even to the strap to start with. Um, and then we want to come in and um, loop it over, bring it back up through the bottom and pull it out. This does help if you have a bike strap as a reference, um, but it's just a matter of going over and if you turn, if you go from front view with a um, orthogonal face, it's a lot easier to um, get some of these working properly. So we just want to make sure this comes down, comes around here, and I'm just holding in Alt and I'm pulling these in quite close. And so now that this has to come out here, we can see we're going to have to move this one up a bit. So I'm just going to zoom in, see if I can try and grab that line. Yep, so I can bring that up. And now grabbing this one, we can continue on. So we can do that, bring it out, and just have it sort of hanging off there. Oh, so I forgot to actually clear this symmetry. Um, so what I'll do here is go symmetry clear. And now, oh, okay, so I just cleared it automatically, I think. Um, because there was only one set of symmetry across the whole thing. So as you can see, the symmetry doesn't work on this one. So we're gonna delete all of that from here. And for this side, all we're gonna do is fold it up and then it gets sort of um, stitched over. This has to have a bit of excess on it because it's adjustable, right? So on a, on a helmet, you can pull this and the helmet will get tighter around the user. Um, obviously we, want to show that sort of capability, but on this side, we don't need that. So what we can do is bring this one down and bring it around like that. And we kind of want to bring it close up to where it gets stitched back on. So in a real helmet that does get stitched on and it looks pretty good, mostly centered. Um, at this point, it might just be easier to shift the buckle slightly backwards and moving these forwards. Um, but we can say, yep, yeah, that looks pretty good to me. Um, at this point, what we want to do is add some thickness to it. So if we hit finish form, um, we can see it's just completely thin and we can add some thickness. Now you can add thickness either in this section or in um, T-splines. I don't really mind. I don't have a preference and I, you know, I don't think there's a problem going either way. This one's slightly colliding. Um, so I am however going to quick save. So just control S because it's always good to save the progress you make before something breaks and fusion crashes. And once that's done, it might take a bit just because there's so much going on in this model. We can go create, thicken that and they're, they're really not thick. They're like, you know, it's what, maybe a millimeter something like that um, looks fine to me can we do two bodies at once I can't remember maybe not um, yeah I don't think fusion likes that um, so let's just do it one at a time one mil yep um, I honestly can't remember how thick these things are but one mil looks fine and then what we want to do is, sorry, not that button. We want to thicken this one. 
by one mil and for some reason it doesn't like it. So let's try negative one, we'll go on the other way back. All right, so um, this one was inverted from the other one. So negative pushes out that way. No problem with that. I think it's still not colliding anywhere. Maybe a tiny bit in here. Like it's just tinily, barely touching that. So that's not a problem. Um, so this is pretty much mostly done. At this point, what we wanna do is just round off some of these edges. Um, ever so slightly. I always go too far, I always have to push it. So if we go to about two mil, that'll be fine. Um, we wanna do that. And, you know, just for our tops as well. And then what we're gonna do is add in some add in some pins, that's being annoying. Um, pins being essentially what holds the helm helmet to the straps. Um, you can have a look if you've got any helmets with you, how those pins look, but um, generally it's just a piece of uh, plastic or metal that's two sections and when it's pushed through, they clip together. Uh, and they stay secured. I don't think they're designed to come out or anything like that. Okay, so we can see this one's actually colliding through here. Um, maybe something happened with the way... Um, oh, this one's probably then offset on the opposite side compared to that. So that's probably why that's clipping through. Doesn't really matter. I would just go in and modify that slightly. Yeah, and this one's sticking out maybe a bit too far. So it's just a matter of adjusting this um, in the actual form. So simply enough. And it even shows where it was thickened. So you can just grab it, edit form, pull, pull it out a bit, push that one in a bit. Oh, always manage to grab the wrong ones. Push it in a bit, finish the form, see how it looks. I mean, this green color is actually working for providing a good amount of contrast. Um, so something like that, perfectly fine. Um, and just because I missed on this slightly, what I'm just gonna do is move this back a tiny bit. Okay, so as we can see, that is absolutely perfect and working as intended. Um, so we've got that, yeah, now we'll add in our pins. Again, if you wanna reposition these top edges a bit higher up, so they look like it's actually a bit stronger or something, that's fine. And what we can do is just create a cylinder. So we can create a cylinder. Uh, if this comes up, it's because you've moved um, objects without capturing their position. Um, this is kind of like saying, did you really mean to move that buckle? And you go, yes, capture the position. And then Fusion will be like, all right, for all future references, that buckle is in that position. So what we can do here is come to our side view. Um, it might help to turn on um, like a wireframe mode where you can see through. This might freak out your graphics card a bit to try and render this. Sometimes it's not a problem, sometimes it is. Uh, and then we just kind of want to get a cylinder going, you know, seven mil, I guess is fine. Um, we can change it here. We can go six, I don't know. Doesn't really matter, does it? And then we can just play around with the length of it. I don't know how long to make it, like whatever the distance from there to there is. Um, we can just reposition it later. So this is, even though it's in the solid modeling workspace, it's still um, pretty free form. We're not being too delicate with all our um, adjustments. So let me just turn off anti-aliasing and ambient inclusion. That should give me a bit more processing capability. So now we just pretty much want to move this select body so we can move the body and not the faces. And we just want to do it till we get it kind of poking out there. And yeah, see so here we actually want it to be coming out a bit more. So what we can do is just a little bit of trial and error, edit our cylinder numbers. So from there we'll go 17. I think my helmet's a bit thick um, in that section, which is fine. Um, I'll just make it a bit 
extra long because um, it doesn't really matter if it's too long. We can edit it by pushing and pulling it as well. I just prefer not to make too many features. So maybe you want to say, make sure the inside's perfect when you position it, like, oh geez, it's really awkward when there's so many things. We can have a look from the bottom as well. Um, and that'll actually tell us a bit too. So like the whole thing should probably be um, angled a bit. Like something like that. So it's perpendicular to the faces. And we can have a look and that's kind of looking good. Although we do want it in the center. Yeah, so we can say something like that. That's going to work for our pin. And... Yeah, that looks fine. Um, again, this needs to come in closer, so we can still go all the way back, grab this, edit it, pull it in a bunch, see how it looks, and edit it again. It really is touch and go in some parts, so it's not actually like a big problem if that's clipping over slightly, um, just because of the sort of uh, organic nature, fabrics and stuff have when you're actually manufacturing them you get compression um in the surface and all that but so something like that's absolutely fine um yeah look this could be positioned a bit close to the center but i'm not really going to bother for this point <clears throat> and yeah then we can just grab this push and pull it so it just comes out a little bit there we can say that's okay and obviously over here we just want it to come out a very tiny bit like that. Maybe even less. I don't know. Um, and then it's just a matter of just, you know, a little fillet on these edges to round it off. So it's actually looking like some sort of um, pin holding it in. That would probably be made from two sections that, <clears throat> that grab together. Um, so what we would want to do from here is actually go and add in a bit of texture. So if we press A and open up our appearances, um, we can put our random plastic texture on that. Um, okay, so that's the one I used for the foam. So I might just drag this new ABS white. Um, a bit dark, play around with it a bit, doesn't really matter. So something like that. And what we want to try and do is get a fabric material going on here. Um, this can start to get kind of tricky. So we'll go fabric. Um, sure, does gray work? Yeah, it kind of looks all right. But we can see, and yeah, we can't actually play around with the color of that. Um, maybe in our cloth, so we can get a black fabric going. Okay, that looks much better. Um, the thing with this, however, is the actual texture mapping of it. Um, we want to make sure it looks right. Like over here, it doesn't look too bad. It kind of pinches up. But then when we've got this, right, it's starting to really get odd. And I might actually just bring in a generic one of a different color so it shows up better on the screen. Um, so we should be able to see, you know, this is really oddly mapped out. Um, so what we can do, we can come over to render and we want to change how the texture maps across this surface. So we open up our texture map controls, we select our body and currently it's on automatic. <clears throat> we want to control that so we can go maybe box mapping and right away that's starting to even it all out. What that does is project it from the side and then the bottom. And honestly, like that is absolutely fine for this case. Like the sides are a little wonky. Um, you can fix that up by applying materials just to the side, but I think that that'll just work. Um, it's not a big deal. Like you can also use spherical um, where you can select say a thing there and it makes a big ball around that and maps it accordingly. Um, sometimes you get some wonky areas like around here. So yeah, box mapping will probably work fine. It'll give us really consistent results. Um, 
I am probably not going to keep them as two different colors. But oh, this one actually allows you to play around with the colors a bit. Um, so we'll kind of go this grayish or whatever and apply that across there. And so yeah, now we've got this kind of strap looking thing going on. I think, you know, probably should have maybe some more um, edges built into it. Uh, that will allow it to actually have a tighter join around here. Um, we might even find that um, evening it out will help. So um, we might change the way this whole area is structured um, to bring this join more in line with the middle. So it's like two different parts coming together. Um, it's really up to you to sort of experiment with that, find out what looks and feels sort of real or the best. Um, and again, this should also be uh, slightly tilted upwards to match that. So we can go and play around with this modification a bit. Just that slight amount of tilt will probably help um, look a bit more convincing. So from there, we've got it there. And, you know, if we're going for the um, proper full level of detail, we want to run a little combine on this. So we get our target body here and our target body here. And what we want to run is a cut command. And sorry, so target body, if we hold in, select that. Okay, so I don't think it's going to allow us to select more than one target body. Um, yeah, okay, so that doesn't matter. We can run it as two separate commands. We just want to make sure we keep our tool. And what that's going to do is it's going to cut out the pin from there. And we can just run it again um, by combine target. We don't actually have to cut out from the foam. I mean, like you can if you're going to be doing exploded views, which actually you should probably be doing. Um, but we really just want it to cut out around the fabric so we can get that little bit of lighting on it when we do our um, super cool close-up renders. So like a little 0.5 mil fillet or something like that. Um, so then when we actually come in to render it, it looks really awesome. Um, oh, and as we can see, this is clipping in way too far over here. So we can even just grab this edge because now it's getting to that point where we're going to have to modify it edge by edge or point by point and just bring it out, uh, finish up our form and have a look. And well, it didn't seem to do anything. So maybe it's really far in. So maybe all the way out like that. Okay, so that seems to have worked really well. Uh, now we can see our pin's not quite right, and then we've got to pull this bottom in slightly to make it match. Um, but that's pretty much the main gist of it. Um, so it'd be really cool to see you trying to model up your own buckles, like, you know, something interesting, maybe a bit more sleek than a conventional one. Um, play around, get the texture mapping right. So the texture mapping's, like, pretty important for things like the strap and all that. Um, yeah, but then you do something like that, you can fit the pins in and when it actually comes to um, rendering it all out, it starts to look like really convincing. Maybe this bottom one should be um, rounder across there or the adjustment should be different, but um, we can see now it's starting to look, you know, each step we go, add the strap, do this, play around with the tech, uh, the contours on the surface, it really starts to add more and more complexity and it makes it look more and more real. Um, so yeah, relatively simple way of going about it in terms of adding a strap. You can do it um, snapping it to the body if you're using a head or you could just do a couple and then pull the rest out using um, alt. Either way works fine. Um, you could thicken it when you're in the freeform tool section or you could thicken it afterwards like I did um, I would probably thicken it afterwards just because it's easier to go back in and modify some of those bits and pieces um, and then you can actually you know you can even run a tiny fillet along the edge of these to round them out um, if you really want to go into that detail for when you're doing a close-up um, on that bottom section down here 
So like this is, that's actually catching the light that's falling down from this material I added on here. Um, so just for this section, it's just a blank surface, but I added in a aluminium mesh material and kind of colored it up to look like it's some type of um, breathable fabric. Um, so yeah, there's plenty of little sneaky tricks you can make to add a level of realism to it. Um, but yeah, so um, just about every type of helmet should have a strap for it. Um, if yours doesn't, um, try and work something in that brings that sort of, not so much organic, but natural sort of, um, fabric flowing style to it. It's really a skill you should practice because it just, it really helps bring your designs into that convincing, um, level. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching. Um, I hope to see your straps and everything, hopefully, um, by the next class or soon afterwards. Thanks.